ultimate freshness is your winning play. It'll give you the strength to make it all the way. Nobody wants to hear this story again. Emily, go up to your room and lock the door and don't open it till I say so. But mom... Do it. It's not an animal. It sounds like there is someone in between the walls. <laughs> Sheriff, why am I here? Your daughter's missing. I would never hurt my child. That's what your husband thought too. Right up until you shot him. Best thing you can do is tell us where she's at. I told you what happened. Oh shit! Oh. There's a lot of ground to cover. I'm sure the bodies will turn up somewhere down the river. Something took my daughter. Did you see it? No face. Just left. This is Sheriff Dickerson on the way out to the Knox residence. Copy, Sheriff Dickerson. Put the gun down! Sheriff, you don't understand. Hey guys, here's Danielle, Celestial Piper, Soldier of the Watch. I just um doing something different today. As you know, my husband's been uh laid up with his back. Uh he is a little bit better than he was last Sunday. Um, not yesterday, of course, but a week ago. And um he's still hurting pretty bad though. I mean, the doctor who did his injections told him, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's pretty bad. So, your prayers, love, and light are most appreciated. So, before I start this video, I wanted to let you know that I decided to do this because we're going to have Mike from A Day in the Life of Mike on tomorrow. So, what I'm going to be doing is recording the video with him, and like I did with Nightblade, we're going to do a premiere so that I can join you in the chat room. So he's going to be sharing his experiences about alien abductions. Now I know some of you may not be too keen on this topic, and that's fine. Uh, know that I love you, no matter what. <laughs> um, I do want to share with you before I start that both myself, my mother, and my husband have had experiences. I'm going to share with you my husband's experience because his is far crazy. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> it's like whacked. He went on a trip with friends of his cross country to California for a bicycle expo or whatever. Um, it was for his work, but it was also like, you know, I'm out of high school, let's do something cool. He had an 84 Camaro, and that's what they traveled in. And I believe he was in Arizona, like the Grand Canyon area when this happened. So they were in like a park area where they parked the car. It was a hatchback. And just so you know, hatchbacks back then did not have the safety mechanism that they have now so that if you get caught in there, you're able to open it from the inside. Not a 1984 Camaro. 
So his buddies slept in the front seats and my husband slept in the hatchback. So needless to say, there's no way he could have gotten out. He woke up, sprawled out on a picnic table. Weird. He had to have been able to get through that hatchback without opening it. Yeah, that's kind of a Twilight Zone kind of thing. Cue music, right? Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I miss you all. I love you. And I thank you so much for your patience and your love and everything. Stay tuned. Top secret Pentagon research projects have long been the stuff of conspiracy theories, but some of them are real. They actually happened and they're worth knowing about. For example, this week in response to a Freedom of Information Act request, the Defense Intelligence Agency disclosed that it had in fact funded research into UFO related techno technologies. This would include the invisibility cloak, warp drives and anti-gravity. The DIA spent $22 million from 2007 to 2005. The program apparently was initiated by then Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada. Nick Pope is one of the world's experts in this. He wants to investigate UFOs to the British government. He joins us tonight. Nick, thanks for coming on. It does sound like the core assumption of this research was that UFOs are real. Yes, it really does. This is something of a bombshell, I think. For months, the Defense Intelligence Agency and the DOD have been trying to spin this story as, well, it's just about advanced aerospace weapons threats. But now we have this document which shows quite clearly what they were looking into. And it's nothing to do with airplanes. It's, it's as you say, anti-gravity, invisibility, cloaking, wormholes, and warp drive. Some of this is about space travel. These ideas are derived from objects that the U.S. government observed in space, presumably? Well, we still don't know much of the story. We really only have a handful of papers and documents on this. I got this uh, from the DIA's Office of Corporate Communications, and we're still trying to digest what this means. There are 38 papers that they produced under this contract defense intelligence reference documents, looking at things which frankly sound like science fiction, and yet they're not. Our tax dollars have been spent on looking at this. And you know, there's one of these papers which absolutely is, is critical. It's looking at something called the Drake Equation. And the Drake mm. Equation is, this is supposed to be a way that astronomers can calculate how many intelligent civilizations there might be in our galaxy. Well, look, if this is not a UFO program, if this is just about Russian and Chinese aircraft, what the heck are they looking at that for? Why wouldn't the US government just say, I don't think it'd be especially controversial, we believe it's possible that there are other forms of life in the universe and we're looking into it. Why hide that? Well, I hope that's exactly what they will now say. I think we know that this, this letter, which I've now acquired, and which has been released under the Freedom of Information Act, we know that this went to Congress. We know that the Armed Services Committee is looking at this very seriously. They're also looking into those uh, videos that we've talked about before of the Navy jets chasing yes. UFOs. So I think the real question is what's going on behind the scenes? And I'm hoping that in the next few weeks, maybe months, Congress is going to say more about this. The Armed Services Committee will speak out and maybe we'll have public hearings at which all this will be revealed. So former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who was for many years in a position to have access to this information for certain, has basically said in public, I, I know a lot, I think this is real, but he hasn't gone farther than that. Have you spoken to him? Has anyone spoken to him? 
I've not spoken to him personally, but I've seen some of his interviews, I've seen his statements, I've seen one of his documents. And for anyone who's trying to say, well, this isn't really about UFOs, it's about next generation aircraft, missiles and, and drones, no it isn't. Harry Reid has made it perfectly clear this is about anomalous objects in our airspace and yes. call them UFOs, whatever you like, you know, we take them seriously. The government has been looking at this. Why all the lying? That's what piques my interest. It always piques my interest. Nick Pope, thank you for all the work you do on this. The non-crazy, sober, responsible work you do, and I appreciate it. Well, that's it for us tonight. And let me just say, there is an awful lot of lying, and none of it happens by accident. All lying in Washington is designed for the benefit of the people telling the lies, and it's a tantalizing clue that we had to press a little more. that comes up frequently, uh, Linda, you know, is this whole question of uh, different kinds of uh, ET life forms. And uh, many people will ask, well, gee, are they all humanoid? And they don't really use that term properly. So I want to do some definitions first. The, uh, the, the, the ET life forms that our contact groups have experienced and seen, and uh, as you're going to hear about, photographed, are all humanoid in the sense that they are two arms, two legs, a head, and a torso, uh, and are upright. And this seems to be a morphogenic field, uh, as Rupert Sheldrake would call it, where uh, apparently the universal concept of man, and by man I don't mean the gender male, but man as in a universal symbol, the kind of symbol that Leonardo da Vinci put inside a circle, uh, that showed man, that uh, is like a five-pointed star. If you look at a five-pointed star, you've got a head on top, two arms, two legs, and that's considered the most sacred universal symbol, by the way, is the five-pointed star for that reason. And I think that this is a universal morphogenic field that works, and once, uh, according to the, the Rupert Sheldrake's morphogenic field theory, is that because the whole cosmos is awake, and because the whole universe is a, a conscious quantum hologram where the fullness of intelligence is present at every point in space and time, that when a certain pattern begins to evolve and work, it then gets replicated at remote places without any linear contact. It's sort of like the hundredth monkey phenomenon where uh, an island with a group of monkeys learn a new social skill uh, or... Uh, hunting skill or what have you, and they will find that at the same time 
a group of monkeys on another island that had no direct contact begin doing the same thing, that there's this sort of collective, great, uh, conscious, integrating uh, switchboard in, rea- in existence that integrates everything happening and that when something works, it replicates and is used at remote places. And it seems that higher intelligent life forms, rather than being, you know, like a circular jellyfish or what have you, uh, tend to be these humanoid in shape. Now, what's interesting is that what we've experienced, and I have also heard this from uh, people who've worked in classified projects that have been present at the retrieval of extraterrestrial bodies when we have um, unfortunately shot uh, down using electromagnetic weapons some of these spacecraft, that the, the bodies that are retrieved may be very small or very tall or you know, various skin colors or even types of skin and various facial structures and hairless or with hair, but that they all are humanoid. They have a head, two arms, two legs. So when I say humanoid, I don't mean human-like. I mean that morphology, that shape. So I want to get that definition out there because many times people will say, well, was the ET humanoid? And they mean looking just like a human, and that is not what humanoid means. So... Um, uh, so less definitional uh, requirements are very important so we know we're speaking the same language. So when I say humanoid, I just mean an, a head, two arms, two legs, a torso. Now, within that, there's enormous variation. Uh, one of the uh, disclosure project witnesses uh, back in the 90s uh, had told me that they had learned that there were uh, several dozen different planetary species that over the years had been cataloged uh, in classified projects that dealt with retrieval of uh, extraterrestrial vehicles and and in studying this issue. And of course, you know, in the pop culture, everyone thinks of the big bug-eyed greys or the reptilians, which of course, ironically, are the ones that are man-made program life forms that are uh, genetically uh, created creatures and uh, many people that have worked in those projects have come forward to, to describe to us exactly how that's done. So the irony is that the public perception of ET is actually the disinformation man-made image, and the actual ETs that have been retrieved aren't very much like that, although there are a couple species that might roughly fit into the shape and size of what might be called quote-unquote a gray or what have you, but that they are more than just that. There's a whole range of beings, uh, and some of them obviously have descended from different types of uh, uh, creatures to begin with. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. 